Okay, perfect. Okay, good. We are on. We're on. Okay, yes. perfect. So um, I was just asking, um, just tell me like a little bit about yourself um, to start, and then we can go into some of the deeper questions, like just who you are, what you do, um, how you kind of started um, as a creative. Um, hello, I'm Miranda. Um, I am French American. Um, so I was born and raised in Paris. And then when I was 18, um, I moved to the States to study fashion design at Pratt Institute. Um, so that's in Brooklyn. Um, I stayed in New York for about nine years. Um, and then I kind of decided to move back to Paris. Um, just I was kind of having like a huge burnout. And um, so I moved back to Paris in November, um, 2018. Um, I would consider myself, a, I guess, an artist, uh, I would, a stylist, um, te textile artist as well. Um, uh, you know, it's when people ask you that question and you're all like I, blank. <laughs> I know. I think that like some people really get into the way that they dress and using that as an opportunity every morning to sort of express a mood yeah. or an energy or what they're feeling about the world or themselves or, and then other people, you know, simply treat it as putting on clothes to get dressed to leave the house. And I yeah. think for you, you, you definitely see everything that you wear just like evokes a mood or mm -hmm. translates a feeling. And so I'm more curious to find out about about where that comes from um when did I you start say, dressing yourself <laughs> yeah well um I remember when I was like super young and I would throw fits like tantrums to my mom when I would want to wear something that was totally inappropriate for the weather and uh I would I remember this one time I, I must have been about six or seven and I had these like glitter shoes and I couldn't wear them. It was pouring rain. Um, and I was crying the whole dinner. I mean, it was pathetic. I didn't even eat dinner. I'm, <laughs> um, they just let, you know, let me cry in a corner. And eventually they were like, she'll, she'll, she'll just tire. She'll get tired. Oh no, no, I didn't get tired. <laughs> I just, I was like, no, no, I gotta, I gotta be upset. Um, but I used, um, I used my personal style kind of like a shield um, in, um, uh, middle school and high school. Um, I wasn't the brightest student. I had a lot of trouble in school. Not that I wasn't like, I was a lazy, you know, person that didn't work. It was just that French education is very tough. They don't have a lot of room for people that don't, you know, don't want to be a lawyer, don't want to be a teacher, don't want to be a, like a mathematician. And so anyone that wants to do something a little more abstract or creative, they're kind of like, we don't really know where to put you. Yeah. So it was a little difficult. Um, and on top of that, I was severely bullied. Um, and so I kind of, it was kind of like to provoke uh, the people that would bully me where I was like, if you're going to bully me, I might as well wear this craziest outfit. Yeah. Um, you're going to tease so me anyway. <laughs> exactly. Um, my, my parents are in theater. So it's kind of like a, um, a very artsy, creative place to grow up. Um, so it was a lot of room for, uh, you know, like if you want to do dance, if you want to, you know, if you want to study piano, if you want to go to drawing class, like it was like any way that, any way you want to express your creativity, we will, you know, open whatever door. Um, so that was really helpful. And I guess that helped a lot also for my creative, cre creativity about dressing myself, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you often, um, you know, you style other people, but the way that you style yourself, I think is, is personal too. Yeah. I, th I, I used to have a blog, which is how I started like a uh, personal documentation about what I would wear and I kind of got kind of pissed off about um, blogging and you know the whole influencer movement happened and I was kind of like well this isn't really what I was trying to go for so I started styling other people and that's when the whole I was like oh that's a job I could actually be paid for that <laughs> um so yeah it was kind of like a like a new adventure yeah 
Yeah. How, how did you take that from like being a hobby and then figuring out that you wanted to style other people to making it like a career? I think was I just styled steps my you friends. Took? Yeah. I mean, it, it was just like, I, I guess my friends would come over when, you know, they needed something for a specific occasion or like, and then I would kind of help them. like, oh, you fun and that. And, and then it kind of happened where I styled you know, somebody called me and they were like, oh, I'm doing a shoot. Like, do you want to come style just, just for fun? And then I started doing it. And eventually somebody was like, oh, hi, Miranda, we're looking for a stylist and we're offering this much. And I was like, oh, <laughs> yes, so. <laughs> People really often, fun. I think like creatives often have a hard time, like talking about money or setting a price oh, yeah. or is that something that's been a struggle for you? Oh my gosh. So much. Um, money. I, I remember I talked about it the first time we um, exchanged and you, you interviewed me and money is such a struggle for, for me personally. And also because I'm a woman, I was taught, even though like I consider myself a feminist, like I'm a, I'm an active act, activist, I guess, a uh, feminist. Um, I still suffer from cliches like women aren't paid as much as men or women you know can't go and take a job somewhere else because like oh my god what about well, I don't know whether your boyfriend or your girlfriend or your partner I don't know mostly from a heterosexual side of view yeah. um and so yeah I remember the first time I got a, a job as a merchandiser they offered me a salary and I was like should I negotiate it and I was like, no, no, they're not going to give it to me if not. So I just accepted it. And then like a few months later, I spoke to one of my, co my old colleagues and she was like, oh, Miranda, you should have asked for like $10,000 more. They would have given it to you. I felt so stupid. I was like, why hasn't anyone taught me that? I know it's something that's so often untalked about. And I think you're right. There yeah. is sort of a, a difference between um, how men are able to approach the situation versus women. Um, and just even to take it like a step further, I feel like creatives, since, since what we do is so um, unique, specific, I mean, it can't really be measured by like success or failure all the time in the same way that a lot mm -hmm. of other industries can be. Um, yeah. what, it, what is your value? And then to put a number figure on top of that, it's a complicated topic. Yeah. And, There's and also as a freelancer, like putting money, like, cause that was a, a specific job and a title, but like, yeah, as a freelancer, like even for you, if you're going to work on a project and somebody's going to be like, what's your, what's, what's your starting your, rate? What's your start? And you're just like, uh, <laughs> well, how many hours am I going to spend painting or like making this embroidery? And you're just like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Just... Or even like, I think, is there a period, like, do I say six hours, but three of them are spent getting ready or doing a mood right. board or is that exactly. time charged the same as actually painting? Is there anything that's yeah. helped you along the way? Like that you can think of any advice that you've been given that would be helpful? Um, a lot, I mean, I, I asked a lot of my friends that were already in the industry and like already working. And I was like, how do you, how do you charge something? How do you like, what, how does it work? And I guess I just asked them a lot, but it was honestly, it was off. Like just me faking it to it make it. Yeah. So, yeah. Figuring it out. Um, seeing a salary and being like, that worked. I guess next time I'll be like, maybe I should do more. Um, and I guess, I, I mean, criticizing myself in that position, being like, do I really deserve that much money? Or it's not even criticizing. It's just like reflecting and being like, yeah, I do. I work hard. Like, of course I deserve it. I, I deserve it as much as the other person, you know? So it's really, it's a really, it's, yeah, it's a weird subject. It's, it's something that you kind of figure out as you go because no one has really taught you about it. Right. So tell us, so is styling your, um, like, would you consider that your full-time gig? I know you do, you paint too. So are you splitting your time right now 50-50? Or, I mean, I'm sure with COVID things are totally different than, <laughs> than normal. Um, right now I haven't styled since before 
COVID um, because there hasn't been any work. Um, so I've mostly been, yeah, painting um, and doing a lot of um, embroidery and um, weaving. Um, but it's not enough. Um, I've had this project in the back of my head and my mom is actually pretty involved in it. Um, because my mom and my dad have a theater company together, um, and their shows, they, they perform, um, and their shows were completely put on hold. So they don't have a job either right now. <laughs> um, and I've always wanted to create a brand. I just didn't really, you know, it's kind of like putting your foot in the water and being like, Oh, I don't know what I'm doing. Totally. <laughs> um, so we've been, we've been kind of prepping things. We're kind of chatting about what's going to happen and how, what, you know, so we're, we're kind of simmering the soup, if you know what I mean. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh my God. I can't wait to see what you guys come up with. I think like during this time, it's crazy how sometimes it's opening up other opportunities that you would never have otherwise had the time Yeah. or like the, you know, the, like, been brave enough to even suggest yeah, it. everybody's like, busy doing yeah. other things. Yeah. And now it's sure. like, well, <laughs> yeah, it's like, well, I might as well. Cause I don't, I don't know where, what's the future look like. Um, yeah. so yeah, it, it would be, yeah, it would be like, a. have always, I mean, I studied fashion design, so I've always wanted to create clothes, um, co like colorful clothes, like, uh, for, for everyone. Um, well, I, I guess we're looking more for women's wear, um, but women's wear, doesn't really mean anything. Anyone can wear it. Right. Um, and I would want it to be uh, um, anyway, the whole, the whole spiel. Yeah. Um, but we'll see, I guess what happens. I don't know. It's, it's in the works. That's but, super yeah. exciting. So you're, you're working on that and then, um, and then your paintings. I want to hear more about that. So how did you get into, um, how did you get into painting and and kind of walk us through that? Yeah. Um, so I started painting. Um, I I think I remember I I always painted, but I had never like sat down and been like I'm gonna make a painting. Like I would usually draw clothes or like uh, nothing really abstract. Um, and in December, I think December or November 2017, I just bought paint <laughs> and I just sat down at my desk and I just started painting. Um, and it's only today that I realized what make, made me do that. Like why all of a sudden I started painting and I paint specifically one type of pa painting. Um, I paint houses. Um, and I, I was writing, I was writing kind of like a, what do you call it? Like a uh, when you talk about your own art, what's the word? Kind of like, whatever. Um, I was writing about what my art is to someone. Um, and I, I wrote down and I was like, I was um, sexually assaulted in uh, March 2017 um, in my own home. And I kind of started painting houses to like, because houses are supposed to make you feel safe and uh, they're supposed to bring you joy. And my house has always been a representation of myself. Um, I've always wanted to feel like I was surrounded by happiness and colors and art. Um, so I started painting houses. Um, and that's kind of what, I don't know, I guess made me, made me do that. So I used kind of like a really awful, sad thing that happened and transformed it into I'm going to use it as a power, as a tool to make me feel happy and, 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 you know, give houses to other people, I guess, in a way. Yeah. It, it, it's actually like a really like beautiful, like, you know, way that you explain it. And I think it seems to be like a theme throughout the way that you create is like translating maybe, um, like a less than, you know, beautiful situation into something beautiful, even from being bullied as a little kid to mm -hmm. like finding a way yeah. to like kind of represent your personal style through those experiences as well. Yeah, exactly. Is it some, is this something that you like talk about and share on social media? Um, I've definitely shared, um, my bullying in, in high school definitely have always shared about 
because a lot of people ask me like, how do you like not have the guts to wear what you want to wear, but kind of like, yeah. what, how, how can you do that? And I was just like, just, I just, I, I don't know. It just, this is what I want to wear. Um, and like then you I would almost gonna... feel probably weird wearing jeans and a white t-shirt. Yeah, I actually went to a protest in Europe on Saturday, and it was a huge protest. And I wore all black, and I, and I wore I, I wear black. I just I wear black, and it's like extra, you know, like a leather jacket with like pins everywhere or whatever. And here I wore a black t-shirt and black jeans, and I was like, oh, I feel I feel naked. It's, yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Really no, I know strange. the exact feeling. That's so funny. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Um, but, um, in terms of my sexual assault, I kind of opened up about it really recently. Um, and I just think it's, I mean, I, I was, I wasn't sure what had happened to me first. Um, so I I went through, I mean, as a, as a sexual assault victim, it's, it's, it's known that, you know, you have like this whole process of, and journey where you realize what happened to you. Um, and yeah, after two, two years, I kind of realized what had happened to me. Um, and I was like, you know what, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it. And hopefully other, other women might feel some kind of connection or to their own story. And I don't know, it it might help someone. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm happy I did. It's definitely, it was definitely a big step. Um, mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. I think that that's something that's like really cool about, about social media or about using these platforms is to like really yeah. actually tell, tell the truth and, um, tell your story and you find so many connections through people who are willing to share their own too. It's, it's almost like you pass along the gift, like you set up the houses, but it also kind of like yeah. allows other, um, other women to feel comfortable and vulnerable sharing their stories as well. Yeah, exactly. I, I mean, I've, I've gotten a few messages that literally made me cry. I was like, you know, it's, it's like somebody sees you and, and decides to share something so personal. And then it's like this connection with them. And you're just like, I wish I could hug you. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, I'm hugging you. I'm hugging my phone. Like, totally. Yeah. Totally. Sure. Yeah. I think that it's, it's definitely like, I've even had those experiences where it's like, wait, yeah. I feel like so bonded to you over, yeah. over this vulnerability. Exactly. And I think even like as creatives, that's something like to, to be able to tap into your vulnerability is like a really important tool. It's so important. And I think that at first you might think it's a bad thing that you have. Um, and then when you realize it's actually like a secret powerful tool that when you realize, oh, wait, I can actually use it for good. Like that's an amazing realization in a way. Yeah. Awesome. And, and so you're working on this secret kind of undercover (laughs) project. What, what else is the future looking like for you? Like, are you, do you have any, um, one, three, five year, what, what's in store? Um, so I used to be really excited to talk about like I would, I would always be like, oh my gosh, I, I see myself in 10 years, like blah, blah, blah. And recently with everything going on, I'm kind of like, I mean, literally with coronavirus happening and the world shutting down, um, you don't even know what's going to happen. So I kind of like take it day by day. Um, uh, I, I just renovated my apartment, um, which was a huge project. And it was really fun. Um, I have a another renovation project. I'd like to renovate another small area in my apartment. Um, but yeah, mostly, I mean, mostly like seeing what can happen with this, uh, project, you know, to create a brand. Um, I would love to travel more, uh, once things go back to the new normal. I know. I know. (laughs) Yeah. Um, and yeah, I don't, I don't really want to say like, I'd like to see myself have a, you know, a store and like brands everywhere. And like, I want a husband and like seven kids or, <laughs> um, definitely not, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's just something that kind of scares me to answer that question. Um, mostly cause I don't want to disappoint myself. Um, but it's definitely something that makes me nervous, like where I think I, I spoke to this 
with, I mean, I spoke with you about it where you put your, you put so much pressure on yourself where you're like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. Like so, uh, people are doing so much better than me. I need to, I need to be figuring out what I'm doing. Like I'm going to be 30 soon, blah, blah, blah. And so it's really difficult um, to find your ground in a way. Yeah. And I think something that I've like spoken a lot about is like comparing yourself to other people. Yeah. And especially like, again, you know, to when everybody's sharing their highlight reel on social media, mm-hmm. to be able to be um, vulnerable and to be able to share your highs and lows and, and then look in the mirror and say like, okay, how, how am I doing? Not compared to this person yeah. or that person, but how am I doing for me? And where do I like, you know, when you're competing with yourself, what does that look yeah. like? Yeah. Um, I think also getting older, I've been realizing toxic people around me and uh you just have to get rid of them um I mean obviously in the in the best way possible but just to be surrounded by people that support you and people that care about you and love you and want only the best for you and I've definitely I've definitely lost people um along the way family family members even where I'm like you're you don't, you don't make me feel good about myself. I can't have you in my life. And so you, you put them in a, put them in a corner. And yeah. Just, <laughs> um, and I, th- I definitely felt bad about it where I was like, why, why is this not working? Why can't, why can't my friend like be, you know, a good friend to me or, or why, totally. and why am I towards that person? And so just being, a, just telling yourself that's okay. It's fine. I think that that's definitely like a really good lesson and piece of advice, um, you know, for anybody getting rid of the toxicity. Yeah. However you can. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. However you can. And and in the best way possible for you where um, you're also, and this sounds like very narcissistic or, or not narcissistic, but like, well, you're the most important person in your life. Right. So obviously care, you know, being generous and caring about other people, but, but I find it really hard to put yourself first, um, where you, you care about other people too much, or you, you compare yourself to other people. You talk about yourself when you look at yourself in the mirror one day and you feel really bad about yourself. You're like, God, you're so ugly. And you're like, no, you know what? I gotta be my best friend. You don't look ugly girl. Like, (laughs) let's do something great today. (laughs) You're you know, gorgeous. You're, not a, yeah, you're gorgeous. Like, and that's really hard. And, and I think I'm, I'm trying to work on that as much as I can. And I really want my other friends to do that. And, or my mom, like, yeah. Just, yeah. When you start feeling good about yourself or you start learning how, how to make yourself happy, you want to reflect that onto other people. So I think it's yeah. difficult when there's, um, when there's like toxicity, bring, it's hard enough just to get yourself Exactly. In, in the mood. So when you have other influences outside bringing you down instead of lifting you up and adding to that positivity, yeah. it, it makes it even more difficult. It's like, why do exactly. I feel like weight pulling me down? Yeah. Yeah. I feel so you, just, girl. Yeah. It's just <laughs> uh, finding, finding the, the air, like swimming up to the water, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. And I think it kind of, it's kind of always a journey like that. I mean, at least, at least for me, I think that you know, when I've shared certain things, just like how you are now, it's, you hear the feedback is like, me too, me too. It's like, I so relate to everything that you've said. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's been so great talking to you and meeting you and getting to chat with you face to face. Um, Before we wrap up, is there any like resource or book or podcast or anything that's really serving you right now that you want to share or you want to mention? Hmm. Well, I mean, I've been listening to The Daily. Um, I know it's kind of like a news podcast, but just right now, um, I've definitely, it's, it's been hard being more creative and like, uh, so I, I've definitely been watching documentaries um, on Black Lives Matter and listening to, yeah, uh, podcasts. I just watched um, the 13th um, yep. documentary, which was insane. I opened um, 
eye opening. Um, so I, I, I mean, it's been recommended so many times, but I'm going to recommend it. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the daily has really, really well put together 30 minute, um, podcasts and the last two, three weeks, they've been really, um, just really amazing and helpful. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much, Miranda. It was so good to with you. Oh my gosh, you're welcome. You. <laughs> well, I'll talk to you really soon. Bye. <laughs> Bye.